Bigfoot Society would like to thank the following sponsors for helping make the podcast possible. The Singular Fortean Society has combined open and honest paranormal investigation and journalism since 2016. Visit the Society at Singular Fortean for all the latest weird news and more. Come with us and investigate the impossible. Lauren Smith is the hostess for Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio, which has been on air for over a decade and has completed over 300 shows. Lauren brings with her a unique viewpoint given that she is not only the daughter of one of the veteran female Bigfoot researchers in the South, but she has been conducting field research since she was a preteen some 20 years ago. Nightcallers is a Bigfoot world favorite, and along with interviewing researchers and witnesses, often features interviews with guests from the documentary film and entertainment industry. Lauren also does a vidcast segment called Nightcallers, which features real encounters sent in by viewers. You can find all of this and more at nightcallersproductions.com. Welcome to the Bigfoot Society Clubhouse, where we discuss a new or old topic in cryptozoology every week. Just hang out and have a good time. I do need to let you know that by hanging out with us on stage and talking in the discussion, you are giving consent to uh, being recorded, which will be used in a future Bigfoot Society podcast, uh, YouTube video, could be anything that you could imagine coming down the pipeline. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, uh, please go ahead and move on down to the audience. Uh, sit back, relax, have a good time. Again, thanks to all for uh, hanging out. And, uh, let's just have a good time. Well, thanks all for hanging out with us tonight. This is a live recording of the Bigfoot Society podcast. We're going to be talking about Bigfoot and fauna or animal interactions tonight. And I just want to do a little disclaimer before we start this. So here's the thing. This is not going to be a Harry and the Hendersons Bigfoot episode. This is... the. <laughs> It gets a little wild. So uh, there's some stories I found where I'm just going to let you know, just a heads up, it's not going to be all, uh, all all roses in this one. It gets a little graphic at times. But uh, th this is more for the listeners because I'm not sure exactly who's listening to this podcast episode. Just be aware. It's going to get a little crazy. So anyways, um, uh, I'm honored to be... Uh, joined by Greg and Tate up on stage. Again, if anyone has any uh, stories about uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch and how they've interacted with animals, uh, how there's been reports of those over the years, you're welcome to raise your hand. You can come up on stage. But I'm going to uh, start out by, uh, in the relict hominid inquiry, of course, we know that led up by Dr. Jeff Meldrum. There's an article by, uh, of course, we know Kathy Moskowitz about the hairy man pictographs and there's a very interesting part of this article that kind of sets the stage right so um, again you can read this uh, on the um, the journal's website but there's a there's a group of stories in this article and uh, so the last story Bigfoot the hairy man was collected by Johnston in 1975 by tribal elders Ruby Bays and uh, Jenny Franco so I want to read the first part of this this story here because it kind of gives an interesting view of what might be going on so okay bigfoot the hairy man bigfoot was a creature that was like a great big giant with long shaggy hair his long shaggy hair made him look like a big animal he was good in a way because he ate the animals that might harm people he kept the grizzly bear mountain lion wolf and other larger animals away uh, during hot summer nights, all the animals would come out together down from the hills to drink out of the Thule River. Bigfoot liked to catch animals down by the river. He would eat them up, bones and all. So that's that's kind of our intro. Uh, pretty much, you know, we've got this story that's been passed down uh, from um, from legends. And uh, it, it just goes to say that there's stories of how Bigfoot in Sasquatch is interacting with animals throughout history. Um, I want to start out by, let's just uh, go in and I'm going to share a story. This is actually a sighting report from the BFRO website. It's very interesting. So this is an interaction the Sasquatch has uh, with a certain animal. So 
This happens in Tennessee. It's in the year 2005, Cumberland County. Uh, it says, one morning I was approximately four miles from my home when I came upon an unexpected sunny clearing that seemed to have been an old road or path at one time because it was grassy and void of underbrush or trees. On my hikes, I am normally under a full canopy of very tall trees, so the sunlight was an unexpected pleasure. As I rounded a curve and my eyes caught the filtered sunlight from the clearing, I observed a large ape-like creature jump from the woods and pounce on something on the ground. Tate, what do you think he's going to pounce on? A rat. No, dude. You, you're not going to expect this. Here it comes. Uh, I abruptly froze. In a flash, the creature stood back up, holding a long snake by the head. Just as quick as this happened, the creature disappeared back in the cover of the woods alongside the clearing. That was a first for me. I mean, I mean, it makes sense that a Sasquatch would go after a snake. I mean, but uh, Greg, have you ever heard anything like this before? Um, this kind of reminds me of a, a video I saw on YouTube of a alleged skunk ape. Uh, oh grabbing a snake in the swamp and uh, kind of like bashing it against the side of a tree. Oh. Um, it's, it's hard to tell. Obviously, uh, Bigfoot doesn't uh, focus very well on camera. So um, Fair enough. Fair enough. It was, it was clear he was either uh, trying to lasso the tree or smacking a snake upside, <laughs> upside it. E- either way, the snake didn't uh, stand a chance for real. Uh, yeah, Greg, would you like? Uh, would you mind uh, sharing one of the the incidents that you found? If not, I can go ahead and go on to the next one. But uh, just go ahead and let me know. Oh, I'm sorry. I I didn't realize I was on mute. Oh, um, you're good. <laughs> no, I. I just want to say a quick uh, hello to uh, Roderick. He uh, he runs the Extraterrestrial Evidence Clubhouse, and uh, he's got some uh, really good content going on over there. Oh, no doubt. Um, oh, my name's Greg. Uh, I run all the weird on Instagram, covering all the cryptozoology, paranormal, high strangeness out there. Um, I... I had a really um, rough time <laughs> researching this one. It's uh, there's not a lot of documented uh, cases about. Um, um, uh, there's not a lot of documented uh, animal encounters. Um, I found some uh, interesting video evidence, though, from. Uh, the Yellowstone uh, National Park they have uh, they have like real time uh, video uh, what do you call it um, like you can watch the geysers and stuff anyways uh, oh, there's, yeah, a, sure. um, there's one that is following a, a small herd of bison and uh, sure enough four bipedal uh beings appear in the frame uh, blurry of course um and uh there's a great uh review of the video by thinker thunker on youtube um shows some size comparisons and uh, a full grown bison is somewhere about six and a half feet at its shoulder and then it has this hump that's about at least another foot above its shoulder so uh this the creature he superimposed it the being uh he superimposed it next to the bison and it showed that it was well over the uh the hump of the bison which is somewhere in the seven foot range so um and it was snowy. There was uh, geysers going off everywhere. It's pretty. It's a pretty chaotic landscape. So these uh, these four uh, beings 
we're definitely brave souls out there in their monkey suits if that's what it was and uh you you got to see it for yourself um, i'm not going to pass a judgment on it um it's a good video it, it's you i like the thinker thunker review just search uh yellowstone bison sasquatch you'll it'll come up for you and another uh interesting hypothesis or theory going around is that is the uh the relationship between bigfoot and coyotes um, oh yeah dude yeah mm -hmm. uh i know uh on finding bigfoot uh cliff barrickman often says that if uh an area can support coyotes that it can support uh, Sasquatch as well and uh, Bobo, uh, James Bobo Fay, um, he he uh, theorized that Bigfoot could potentially even keep coyotes as pets like taking the taking the cubs uh, when they're young and just raising it like as if as we would raise like a, a dog from a puppy um, I mean, that's, it's speculation. Um, there's not any hard evidence to prove this, but this is why we got to document things. So we do find the patterns and, uh, see what the relationships are. It's important to look at wildlife in an area. If it can, if an area can support large mammals, then there's a higher probability that it could su su uh, support something like a uh, Bigfoot. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of info I could find. So Greg, uh, a, a weird thing about the coyote thing. Um, it just reminded me from that, uh, that uh, Kathy strain article. Um, there's actually a part where it kind of explains on uh, how how the different animals are viewed uh, in in the legends and everything, and it actually it says hairy man was wiser than the coyote. I think that's that's pretty interesting. So maybe there's some history there. We just we just don't know, you know. But uh, I think there's definitely some kind of relationship um, or something. They just seem to come up a, a lot of people. I've been talking about coyotes and. Uh, and uh bigfoots lately and i know mike has been but unfortunately mike can't be with us because of his job that's fine um i totally understand some some other time i think it might warrant having a conversation about bigfoot and coyotes because i know alex has a lot to say but alex is getting ready for his his um journey out to the pacific northwest for small town monsters which is pretty pretty awesome um i did find another um uh, incident on the BFRO website about coyotes and it's kind of interesting it says um, part of it is as I noted the coyotes had just started uh, their nightly sing when I heard the vocalization they were in talking about the Bigfoot vocalization right they were in the southwest as they usually are at the base of the mountain when they heard this sound they stopped singing me and the coyotes for about half hour and had moved to the east directly behind our home. So, you know, you just don't know. Like, maybe it's this thing where coyotes are controlled by, or maybe they're just frightened by the Sasquatch. We we have no idea. It's it's crazy to think about. I've heard of uh, researchers uh, doing call blasts, and, like, the coyote packs will go silent when they blast a, a Sasquatch call. That's that's really interesting. Uh, Tate, have you ever heard any uh, coyote uh, Bigfoot interaction stuff over the years? Not personally, but I do know people that have, that have heard that before, for mm. sure. It kind of similar to what we've been saying so far or anything, anything different? I'd say it's pretty similar, yeah. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. There's another incident i have here um 
This one, I, I don't think I'm actually going to read it verbatim uh, because it's pretty, it's super intense. Uh, it's from Texas and it has to do with uh, pretty much a Bigfoot takes out a hog in the Sabine River bottoms in Texas. Um, I mean, it's, you can totally, yeah, I mean, who's to say that 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 couldn't happen definitely i mean uh, a hog or a pig would probably be a very easy meal for a bigfoot and i guess there was a, a, a gentleman that was out hog hunting from a tree and uh, through his scope he watched uh, uh, a dark uh, hairy bigfoot type creature pretty much run down a hog and absolutely uh take it down um if you want to, you know, you can definitely DM me. I can uh, give you the report link. It does go into pretty graphic detail about the whole situation, but I don't really feel like maybe I want to read that on here. But um, I'm kind of curious, Greg, did you happen to find, like, any reports that were not, like, Bigfoot or Sasquatch just totally taken down animals? Like, maybe any, like... A symbiotic relation i guess the the bison or the buffalo would be the closest that we found wasn't it yeah i mean that wasn't even from the vfro or anything mm. that was actually i saw it originally through national geographic which was intriguing and uh i guess the other incidents i hear of um are Bigfoot like gifting animal carcasses to oh, okay. people to humans. Like I've heard of the rabbits being left for people. But I mean, does it if anyone has a house cat that goes outside, it it'll bring back dead things for its humans, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally. This actually reminds me of a post that uh I don't know if you know who 603 underscore Bigfoot is on Instagram. Um, a guy out in New Hampshire. Uh, name escapes me, but a really, really cool dude. Um, he actually had a picture up today of he had found a, a rabbit that had no head. And uh, he's saying that that is specifically from a Bigfoot. Um, I would be interested to know, like, what the... Um, evidence he has uh behind that but uh it, it's definitely an, an interesting uh post that he has on his on his account um he does a lot of bigfoot research i suppose out there but yeah i, I heard the exact same description on an episode of bigfoot and beyond um ah. i think uh, cliff was on his own that week and he was he was interviewing uh, an anonymous uh, witness who who had that same experience where uh, he was being left uh, decapitated uh, rabbits. Wow. That is crazy. Huh. I think, uh, wasn't there on, um, I think, Expedition Bigfoot, the first season, they had experienced, like, uh, a hawk left as a gift or something to that uh, effect. It's been a little bit of time since I've watched that, but I, I believe there was a, a gifting segment in that as well. Um, yeah, just do a quick reset of the room. Uh, if anyone has any uh, things they would like to uh, contribute about uh, Bigfoot interacting with animals or anything regarding gifting or... Oh, that's funny. Um, uh, things of that nature. It, it sounds crazy when you say it out loud, doesn't it? Uh, no, well, it's a little bit. But uh, Tate, what do you think? You you've been a little quiet through all this, but uh, what are your thoughts on the gifting? Yeah, why not? Um, I I mean, I think they could do it. You know, yeah, they're very curious creatures and. They're the among the ape family, and you know, apes do bizarre things like that, or you know, can learn to gift and stuff. So why not? I think it's very plausible they could be doing that for sure. Hmm. Tate, I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot. 
kind of like last week. Do you mind uh, sharing a little bit about uh, your uh, your upcoming documentary? Just just a quick summary, so I can make sure that it's in this uh, this episode when it goes out. My new film. Yeah, um, sure. I am working on a new film, which will be I'll be filming in June and July. Um, those well, part of June. <laughs> near the end of June and part of mostly, uh, mostly the whole month of July I'll be filming. So I'm going to be talking about some sleep paralysis stuff in regards to Bigfoot, if there's a connection there or not. So that should be interesting. Also, I have a thermal video sighting that I got in Southern California. So I'm going to be doing a recreation of that, which will be in the film. And then you'll probably see Bobo or Cliff Berkman, maybe Matt Moneymaker in there. So, that's all I'll say for now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Tate. Definitely go to uh, Tate's um, Tate's profile. Uh, I'll put this in the show notes so you can get more information about that upcoming documentary and how you can help support him. But I also I see put my, uh, I put my Cash App uh, account. Ah, <laughs> nice. <my> bio here. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody feeling generous, they can go ahead and. Uh, you're funny you're funny give me your money yeah just throw it all his way um i also see experience down in the audience always nice to see you as well sir thanks for for stopping by uh we are doing a a little chat about we talked about how bigfoot uh interacts with different uh animals uh over the years um, but uh, we've had a good chat this has been for the podcast uh greg any other um uh, thoughts before we transition out of the recorded part of the the uh, night i think um what it all boils down to is um bigfoot is an apex predator mm. and he's a big guy and he's hungry so most of his interactions with other wildlife will be wherein he is the hunter and they are the hunted. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You reminded like me of that movie. earlier, and it was a good yeah, reminder. Just like the movie Primal Rage. Oh guys. my goodness! I can't handle those Tate. I can't do it. I see our our buddy Andy in the audience. I sent him a, a invite to come up and speak. I know he's heading out west soon. I think it, they're actually already out there, dude. Like, um, I saw a picture of Seth posted a picture where they were looking at Mount Rainier, I think, I think so. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. I want to yeah. say that's, I mean, Andy, you're welcome to come up on stage. If you're just listening, that's cool as well. At this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop recording.